Yes, it's still raining, but we're up at the workshop working to get stuff done, feeders made, and all sorts of little bits finished while we've got the time because the clock is ticking. First thing of the day is a cup of tea. It always gets things going well. So, what I really wanted to do was make some uh, feeders that would uh, allow us to give protein or pollen sub as well as liquid feed. And that is what these are. Um, you know that I have my finishers. Uh, I have a five over five configuration and the reason I like using that is because I can start off with a five frame nuke that I've overwintered and for us five to six frames overwinters really well. In the spring I build that up and when I'm ready you know I put another five frames on top of that. Okay. Now when I'm finishing my cells, in other words I've taken the, my started cells from the starter, my cell builder, which you've seen in my videos, I then put my cells that are started into a strong finisher. And obviously I put them in the top above an excluder. And the problem I have is, um, well, I've never really had a problem, but what I want to enhance is I want to enhance the feeding. So I can always give feed in the liquid feed with the white feeder you see on top of the five over five configuration. So that's, um, that's on top of the top box. But what I wanted to do instead was make a feeder that enable me to feed the both. So it means I can feed pollen sub and liquid feed. So the liquid feed goes in here. And the reason why I've got this um, uh, feeder nozzle to come up from underneath is because if I had the original feeder, which is this one here, you see the original feeder has one compartment, okay? With one axis. So the bees come up from the bottom through that hole and they come out over the top of this bar and they can feed in that part. So the, li the liquid is technically draining into there and they feed from the inside. There's a hole inside there, which the liquid goes into, which is what the standard hive top feeder consists of. But we've got rid of that completely. And by get rid of that, we gain a little bit of space, uh, extra capacity, and we've also halved it. So where we've gained on this part, We've lost because we've halved it, but we don't need actually a lot of feed in these feeders. It's just to make sure we can give them some. The whole idea is being able to give them the two types of feed if they need it. So this feeder does that. And one bit gives the syrup if they need that. And don't forget, we're gonna be checking finishers every two to three days. So it doesn't have to hold a lot. It just needs to hold some. So the bees can come up and Come out through there and use the uh, and, uh, and access the syrup there. And the reason why this feeder has the the, uh, the place for the bees to come out in the middle is because if you imagine this is on top of a colony, where does the majority of bees sit? Underneath the middle bit here, if they're clustering in the winter. Because in the winter, if we want to give pollen sub, we can give it this side. And the whole idea is we can give pollen sub winter or spring. Um, and when we're finishing cells in this part. And if I'm not using it, I just put a blank in and it sits on top of the frames or a piece of the aluminium insulation. That just covers it. We'll put the aluminium on anyway because then that'll hopefully stop the bees building into here. But I don't mind them building a bit in here. I'll tell you why. Because if they're building in here, they're not building on all the frames. And that's the biggest battle we have. It's a, it's a battle between making sure they've got enough comb to build into and making sure they've got enough syrup so they're always absolutely full of feed and have got every bit of nourishment they want when they're massively overflying with bees, that's what you want. But this is the finisher stage, as I said. So you wanna give them all of that, but you wanna, you wanna also give them space. So if they need to build up here, they can, and they won't build them webbing around the cells they finished. It's always a bit of a juggling act. But overall, this is, I think, will be a great compromise because I can feed and I can feed pollen sub. And I'm my colleague is an absolute whiz on the spindle molder. So all this is made uh, from five, six different pieces, which I'll show you the bits to now. So the construction is pretty simple. The only thing we've had to use is a bit of uh, plywood here. 
but that's absolutely great because that's only one small piece and we've been able to use uh, we had some off cuts from some old uh, uh cover boards that we've used and we made basically a feeder with all the wood for virtually nothing and so what we do is we cut the wood down to size and then machine it all on the thicknesser and we end up with these pieces, then the spindle molder puts all these pieces in. But obviously that's not my department. Um, I'm obviously extremely grateful that my colleague is an absolute whiz on the spindle molder because they say it's uh, it massively helps things. And then I, I do all the sanding. We've got a sander here, an upturned belt sander. We, we sand all these things out and then we get the assembly part here and then we put them all together and knock them up, glue them and screw them. And we use, use, use the usual things, but they're glued and screwed. So they never should probably break. That's the finished product. They'll be sanded a little bit. And then after this process, we're then gonna actually dip them in the hot paraffin wax, which seals everything and means the, the feeder will be sealed. And there'll be also obviously no need to paint these either because they're gonna be feeders. They're internal for another reason. And also they're treated with the hot wax and the hot wax penetrates into the wood really well. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, coronavirus. So that will really finish the job off, but they're all, Basically, I've made, I've got 25 of these. We'll make it, I think, 30 of his ones. Uh, so we'll all be able to feed pollen sub and feed at the same time, should we need it. It doesn't mean we do. It just means the bees have something else. If they need it, if the weather gets crappy or if it rains or it's whatever the weather is, they can get 100% feed for the whole time. Well, that's pretty basic construction. We uh, do glue and screw every joint because these are going to last, or well, hope they will. It all takes a bit of time, but hey, what else are you doing in the winter, you know? It's just a question of organisation. So this is uh, the top piece. That's the wrong side. We've got three, uh, three different size pieces for one. So that, this one basically fits together. There's the groove in the top that fits in the top of this feeder. Fits on like that, we put all the glue in and when you knock it together, it all assembles really nicely. And you can see that's basically how it goes together. It's pretty simple stuff, but what is we're gonna glue and screw this like we always do. That goes into here. We have a, like a former that is a, a square and it means we can put everything into that. And we know then that everything's as it should be set up square when it's into this device. So this, this device, I can tell you, has made an awful lot of hives. I don't know if you can see that well, but it's, it's a, basically it's a set square. And I'll try and show you. And this, you have two sides to it. So as long as you get your joints in and everything's done, you then can screw through at each side. So it actually works really well. So we'll put screws through this side, through this side, and then we'll do the two, and then the top part goes on afterwards. But it's all a question of finding a way to assemble. And the, the interesting thing is it actually takes a little bit of time when you start a new project to be able to, um, to, be able to get the project knocked out quickly because you have to learn how to do the assembly method. So I know that when I, once I screw this one in, Once this one's in, I then can turn it over. That all pulls together and we can screw the other side. Just takes a lot of specific little... So we do that side and we flip it over and we do the other side. So, there you go, that's the top screwed in. Really nice joints. Two, we do two across each joint there and it pulls everything nicely together in a lovely finish. That means we can we still open this a tiny bit to get this last top piece in. So we're just finishing off these um, feeders by running them on the router just to give the, the shoulders all a nice finish. They look absolutely great when they're done. You can see the process.
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll let you know how these feeders go when we're um, using them in the spring and summer. And um, hopefully we'll get good results and we'll get even better cells that are even fatter and more well fed. Just remember, it's all in the jelly. It's what you want to do. Maximum nutrition all the time. Have a good day. Bye for now. Catch you again soon.